perhaps one of the more underrated best animated picture winners out there, Rango is a strange movie, but also a rather brilliant one. Still, with its weird designs, somewhat uneasy atmosphere, and a tone that at times almost feels like it wasn't made for children, it's kind of easy to see why some people are so quick to just write it off. However, if you take a closer look at this movie, and one scene in particular at that, one might find that this movie is actually a great piece of filmmaking, the likes of which is so seldom seen these days. And needless to say, there will be major spoilers for this movie ahead, so if you plan on watching this and don't want anything ruined, you should probably stop the video and come back after you have. This will be your only warning. Alright. So as odd as it may be, the writing behind this movie honestly deserves a lot of credit. It even starts out with the title character essentially breaking the fourth wall and basically explaining to the audience how storytelling works, like how a plot needs to be solid and conflict to drive it. Now, some might find this to be a rather strange approach, but for reasons I'll get into in a minute, it was actually a great way to set up both the movie and its main character. But long story short, Rango sees himself as an actor and desires a role to play. And boy does he get it. Just not in the way he had been expecting or hoped for. Now, the reason this movie setup works so well, establishing Rango as somebody who desires a story to play out, is because this movie at its core is a true western. And what's significant about that is that when you really look at it, the western genre is essentially dead, and has been since the early 1980s. And because of that, most modern westerns that come out usually desire to separate themselves from the ones of old and thus try to deconstruct the westerns from the 40s, 50s, and 60s as much as possible. But I'll get more into the downfall of the western in a separate video. The point is, unlike so many of its contemporaries, Rango doesn't try to deconstruct the Western mythos, but embraces it. And it honestly does feel like a slightly modified Western that easily could have come out in the 60s when the genre was starting to take a turn towards the dark and gritty. And this is why at times the tone feels a little all over the place. Because as an animated movie, it has to have moments for the kids, but as a western, it has to have its darker moments as well. But surprisingly enough, I believe it actually manages the whole thing pretty well. In fact, when you really look at it, the plot is one that's heavily associated with westerns. A newcomer arrives in a desperate town and quickly becomes a law enforcer that the town then looks to for help. Now, setting aside the fact that most Western movies actually didn't have this exact plot, it's still one that's synonymous with the genre at this point. But what makes it work is the fact that its main character knows that. Being an actor and understanding how stories work, he decides to embrace his role in the story that he believes has been chosen for him no matter how ill-equipped he actually is for the task. So thus he becomes the mysterious stranger and gunfighter he believes he must play, and though he's completely out of his element, he's actually able to fake his way along very well, and even offers the town some much-needed support and suggestions. In fact, he plays his part so well that he not only comes to believe his own lies, but loves what he's become at that. And then it all comes crashing down on him. And what makes it even worse is, 
He only started the whole thing in his attempt to finally play the perfect part that had eluded him for so long. But by the time that scene comes, it's not really about that anymore. Now he actually cares for the town of Dirt and its inhabitants. He had come to believe he was the sheriff he was playing. But when confronted by a creature that will fully admit he comes straight out of hell, he has no choice but to admit it was all a lie. But the hard part isn't so much admitting it to the town, but admitting it to himself. Because he had come to love playing that part so much. So once he's been left out to dry, there's only one thing he can do. Take a leap of faith. And that is where we get to the best scene in the movie. And let me just keep it short by saying... Everything concerning the spirit of the West is perfect. His wise words, his persona, everything. And being modeled after Clint Eastwood, I think the only other person that could have been more appropriate for that moment was John Wayne. And even then, I feel that Eastwood fits the mood and context of the scene better. Really? The only thing that could have made it better is if it was actually him, different voice or not. But regardless, Timothy Oliphant was the perfect substitute and kills it in the scene. But two lines in particular reveal the underlying brilliance of this movie. It doesn't matter what they call you. It's the deeds that make the man. And of course... No man can walk out on his own story. Because not only are both those quotes really great life lessons, but they fit Rango's situation at that point perfectly. Basically, it doesn't matter why he did what he did or how many lies he told, because the fact remains that he still did a lot of really notable things, even if it was part of a ruse. And that's what he should be defined by. He claims his deeds only made everything worse, but as the ending brilliantly shows, when all said and done, that couldn't be further from the truth. And on that same topic, he's also telling him that he may have started the whole thing to finally play out his perfect role, but now he must become that character for real if he's to save the town he's grown to love. And being how much he understands stories, that line hits very close to home for him. Because he started this story for himself. And now, to set things right once and for all, he must finish it for others. And no matter how much he may tell himself otherwise, there's no running away from that. And really, another thing that makes it so great is the fact that the whole scene is part of an element present in many westerns. The need to decide who you are and find your identity. Because that's exactly what many of them hinge on. A character needing to decide which side of the fence they're going to be on. If they'll fight for good or evil. And they don't always make the right choice in those cases either. But the point is that in this movie, Rango understands exactly what the Spirit of the West is saying to him, and finally decides to actually become the legend instead of just playing him. And honestly, how many other animated movies are there where the hero stares down the villain at the climax and tells him he does have the nerve to kill him, and it be treated as a good thing? But in this case, it's the perfect demonstration of how he's no longer just playing the part, and that the movie isn't afraid to embrace what westerns were always known for. Because as I was saying before, what makes this movie unique is that it's self-referential, but at the same time plays it completely straight. 
basically, Rango knows he's in a Western, but it's once he actually becomes a part of the story, rather than just playing a role in it, that he can finish it. And as I also said before, almost any other writer would have taken advantage of Rango's self-awareness to deconstruct the Western as much as possible, but instead this movie proves to be a complete ode to the genre. And this is especially evident with the Spirit of the West scene, as it really does feel like he's talking to the embodiment of the Western itself. And I'll just say that in this day and age, I highly doubt most other people would have been able to pull that off so well. But one other thing I must say this movie gets right is how it does the villain, and I mean the real villain, and his plan. Because the mayor is very obviously modeled after Noah Cross from Chinatown, but with one very important difference. Simply put, that he's a complete deconstruction of him. Because while it's true that money can buy a ton in this world, and even help you get away with murder, this movie accurately demonstrates that sooner or later, somebody will come along that'll expose you, or that someday you'll double-cross the wrong person, and when that day comes, it will not be pleasant for you. So what I'm getting at here is, this movie completely tears apart the notion that people like Cross are untouchable and that they'll never face retribution for their actions. And, of course, that people with plans like his aren't nearly as sensible, smart, or foolproof as they usually think they are. In fact, what makes it even more impressive, if you can really get your head around this, is that instead of being a deconstruction of westerns, this is almost a deconstruction of the deconstructions. Because unlike what the mayor claims, in the end it's people like him, the people that try to destroy the western and its mythos, that end up forgotten. While the icons of the old west, both from real life and the movies, have endured and will continue to endure as folk heroes and villains for possibly hundreds of years to come. Because the western frontier may be physically gone, but its legend still lives on. So simply put, Rango is a beautiful ode to everything the western represented, and this is especially prominent in both his talk with the Spirit of the West and the Mayor's final fate. And while some might not be able to really pick up on the finer details of the story, it's still a very well told one that's not afraid to be a love letter to a genre that most other filmmakers today seem to be avoiding like the plague. And because of that, it might just be one of the best made films in terms of artistic style of the new millennium, being unlike almost anything else out there and embracing many techniques from an older generation in ways that are really only done by the very limited best of the best these days. But at the end of the day, this movie is the kind of tribute the western genre honestly deserves. And the only real downside to it is that there aren't more like it out there. Alright, I think I've sung this movie's praises for long enough. So now I think it's about your turn to tell me. Do you think Rango is a great and underrated ode to the western genre? Or do you believe I'm giving it way too much credit? please let me know your thoughts in the comments. And as I just said, you don't have to agree with this video. You can feel any way about this movie that you want to. Thank you all for watching. I really appreciate all your support, and I hope to see you all next time.